Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at the ultimate network storage solution from Ugreen. This is the NASSYNC DXP4800+. Inside the box, you're going to get the main unit, which is your NAS, your user manual, your warranty card, which is two years, and your Ethernet cables, two of those, screws and screwdriver, also hard drive tray keys, you've got two of those, and a power adapter and a cable, and two thermal pads. So this is the actual unit itself. We've got four bays here, which are lockable with the keys that are supplied. So that means they make them nice and secure. On the front, we do also have that power button and LED display. We have an SD card slot on here as well. There is also a USB-C port, which supports 10 GBS on there. Also, we have a USB type A port, which also supports 10 GBS on the speed side of things. There is a key that comes which allows you to lock the drive. So how much can we store on this NAS? Well, up to 112 terabytes to secure all your precious data can be stored on the DXP 4800 Plus. Ugreen have made this super easy to set up and I'll show you that in a second. To remove the uh, drive tray here or the caddy, you can actually just push the button and it will release it like so. You can store three and a half inch drives, mechanical drives on here, two and a half inch mechanical drives can be stored on here, and also two and a half inch SSDs, if you want to store those on here as well, you can do uh, by using the screw holes and the screws that are available in the kit. So let me show you the back of the actual caddy here so you can actually see the back, because it has a very useful mechanism, which is this little press, uh, this little button here, and this will extend it to allow you to put the actual drive in. You just press this button and extend like so. And this will allow you to slot the drive actually in the caddy itself. There is also some screw holes here if you want to put smaller drives in like SSDs and also a two and a half inch drives on here as well. You don't really need to use screws for the three and a half inch uh, drives because it's a tallest design. But all in all, really good build quality on this particular model. We'll install some drives in a second, but let's have a quick look on the rear of the actual unit. We've got a huge fan here to keep this cool. And this is also pretty silent, this fan. We have a magnetic filter that can be added on here and easily removed to be cleaned. Now in quiet mode, the noise levels stay between 29 and 34 decibels. Now ensuring you won't be disturbed while sleeping, for reference, 20 to 40 decibels is similar to a quiet environment in a library. So it's pretty quiet. We also have a HDMI port on here, which supports 4K. We also have a USB 3.2 port on here and two USB 2.0 ports. So pretty much decent amount of USB ports are supplied on this particular device. We have two LAN ports on here or ethernet ports. These are 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports and a 10 gigabit ethernet port on here, a reset button area, and also a DC 19 volt input there, which is an external power adapter as I showed you earlier. Now the whole device is made of metal. And as you can see right here on the bottom, we do have four anti-slip rubber feet to help with uh, keeping down vibration. And we have an access panel right here with two screws. We can remove this and gain access to the memory modules. And there's also two slots here for NVMe drives. So the NVMe drives, which this supports are PCIe Gen 4 times four speeds. So you can populate both of these right here as well. The memory itself, you can go up to 64 gigabytes of memory inside this unit, but it does come with, in this model, eight gigabytes of DDR5. So you can upgrade this and there's two uh, slots on here for memory modules. So the CPU on here is a 12th generation Intel processor, which is an Intel Pentium Gold with five cores and six threads, which is plenty powerful for this NAS. Now, Ugreen did send me over this unit for review, and they also sent me over some hard drives. So all opinions are my own. No one is reviewing this video before it's released, and no money has changed hands for this review. So to populate uh, the actual caddies here, all you need to do is put the drive in, pull this little lever back right here, and this will then click it into position. And you can, from pretty much there, just slide these back into the actual NAS itself. 
Let me just quickly show you there. There's no screws needed. It's well in there. It's not coming out. So you don't really need any screws here because it's a tallest design, as you can see. So let me just pop this back into the NAS. I'm just going to populate two of these for this video, and I'll set this up again at a later date for myself. So let me just click this into position. You just push this down, and it should then click into place. So here we have the actual bays populated right now. The whole build quality on this is exceptionally good. It really is. And if you're looking for an easy-to-use, easy-to-set-up, very well-built NAS, then you can't go wrong with the Ugreen NASSYNC DXP4800+. Plus. It's a pretty decent quality NAS. So to set this up, you would need to plug in your power adapter. I've got the Ethernet cable plugged in. And what I'm going to do is power it on, and you'll see the LED lights rolling across the bottom. It will make a few beeps, and it will start to load up. You can then head over to your computer and finish off the setting up process for this NAS. I'll run you through this so you can see how easy it is to set up a NAS for yourself. Why do you need a NAS? Well, if you're still using external hard drives, then using a NAS will allow you to basically create your own private cloud. Your data is all in your hands on your own local network. You won't need any uh, online services. You can use this to share data across the network around your home, and you can even access this outside your network remotely if you need to. So you can see their website has been well written. It's really easy to understand, and they even take you through the step-by-step -step process explaining how you can upgrade the firmware and also how you can set this up, unboxing it and getting started. They've thought of everything to make it easy as possible for you to be able to set one of these up for yourselves. The initial outlay for one of these are pretty expensive to get up and running, but once you've got one, you'll never look back. You can see how easy it is to set this up step-by-step -step guide, and I'll show you this in real time as well, setting it up, it's super easy. So how to access all the panel is all here, and how to upgrade the memory if you need to, and put in your M.2 drives, your NVMe drives. It's super easy to understand. So let me go ahead and I'll quickly go through the installation process with this operating system. So on the bottom of this page, it will talk about uh, add a device and also basically how you can set it up, whether you're setting this up mobile phone on the tablet or on the PC. I'm going to be using the PC method. We're going to go to that location right here and you will see this page right here, select the device. It's already recognized it on my network. I'm going to click connect and it will go through the setup process. Right here, welcome to Ugreen NAS Storage. All you need to do here is agree to their terms and conditions and click start. From here, you're going to need to give the device a name or leave it as is. And then you can give yourself an admin account name and a password. Make sure the password is nice and strong. And once you've followed through here, you should be pretty much good to go. So I'm going to leave the device name as is, but make sure it's capital letters if you want to set one up for yourself and you can't have any spaces. So let's go ahead and put a password in right here. And it will tell you if you've gone wrong. It will tell you what the requirements are during the setup process. Next, we're going to go next here and move on to the next step. You'll see basically register and uh, bind your Ugreen account your cloud account to enable remote access. If you want to access this from outside your network, you will need to set this up right here. For this tutorial, I'm just going to set it up locally so it's accessed only locally on my network. So I can skip this part right here. So let me go ahead and skip this part and we can move on to the next part. It will warn you that you can't access this device remotely through uh, the internet outside of your network. That's fine for this video. So system update options, I'm going to go with the recommended right here. Now you can share the device analytics uh, data with Ugreen if you want to by check marking the bottom one there. I'm just going to leave this off for this video. But if you need to authorize them to collect some data to help them improve their product, you can put the check mark in there. You can see right here it's setting up a local account for us, which means it's going to be contained on my local network and you won't be able to access it from outside of your network. You can set this up after the fact, but we're just going to go for a local setup. 
I'm going to speed this process up right here. It does take around about 20 minutes, it says, but it didn't take that long for me to set it up myself. So I'll speed this process up and get to the next phase of the setup process. What I would advise you to do if you are purchasing a NAS for the very first time is try to populate all of the drive bays with as large a storage as you can possibly afford. At minimum, I would say four terabytes. Try and get more if you can. So let's take a look here. Hello and welcome to Ugreen NAS. From here, you can just click start and it will go through and show you some pop-ups on the screen to some of the locations that you'll need to visit to set this up. It walks you right through the whole process. So I'm gonna click start to get started. And you might see some displays on here to try and explain to you what you can do by clicking on these locations. And that's perfectly fine. If you've never used a NAS before, this is just explaining what they do and where they're located. So you can see it's showing us the control panel, the app center, and it's also showing us how to change your desktop wallpaper and all that sort of stuff. So once you've finished with this, you can click go. And now it's asking us to set up our storage. So let's go ahead and do that right here. So let's go next and it will say uh, welcome uh, to the storage manager, create a storage pool. So let's create one of these. You can then select your drives and you can enable hard disk test if you wanted to. These are brand new drives. So I'm going to leave these as it is, but you need to select the drives uh, that you want to use right here. And then you'll need to select a RAID type if you try to continue without selecting a RAID type, it's going to highlight them and say, hey, you need to select a RAID type like this. So we're going to go ahead and use the recommended, which is in green here, saying RAID 1. And that's what we're going to go with. So let me select RAID 1. If you're using old drives, I would recommend hard disk test as well. But we've got new drives, so I'm going to continue and move on to the next step. Choosing our file system. So whether you want to use EXT4, high performance and stability, supports large capacity storage, or whether you want BTRFS, which supports snapshotting, copying, assigning space quotas, and shared folders, and all this sort of good stuff. You can read up what the difference is between these. I'm going to use the BTRFS, and we can then move on to the next bit. So here you can see a little preview of what we've set, selected so far, and our selection. Next, it says all the data will be erased on our disks. If you've got data on there previously, then it's going to erase all that data. It's asking us to put in our password, which we set up earlier on for our admin account. So let me go ahead and put that in right here. And we can confirm this. And it's now actually starting to create our pool and our volume here. Now, down the bottom right hand side, you can see a little AI bot there and it will help you set it up. It says two settings completed. Your new uh, Ugreen NAS is ready to go, and it will help you set this up in a super easy and efficient way. So let's go ahead and let this continue doing what it's doing, and I'll show you the next step. So let's check out our little AI bot down the bottom right-hand corner here. So we can click on the little bubble here, and it says, Two settings complete, your new Ugreen NAS is ready to go. It says, please create your first folder uh, and upload your files. So let's go ahead and do that. It will give you an on-screen display on how to set this up. If you've never set this up before, this is super useful because it helps you to navigate through the menu system and set up files for your NAS. So you can go ahead and upload them to the NAS. So you can see right here is asking us to put a location for your personal folders. And all you need to do here is select the volume that you've just created. And you can see the account right here. You can give access to this. You can see there's some full control right here. You can set all that up later on. And then you can click on this little plus sign right here, which it showed you earlier, to create your first new folder. Or you can create your first new shared folder and so on. And you can go through. It's pretty self-explanatory. All of the information is on their website. If you want to see a more in-depth video on this, it is pretty straightforward. Then let me know in the comments section down below. You can call this whatever you like, whatever you want to create. Uh, maybe you want to call this data or Plex or Jellyfin or whatever it may be that you want to set up onto your NAS. And then you can put all your data in there and away you go. So let's go ahead here and take a look. So you can set up a personal folder management, shared folder management and so on. And we also have some permissions that you can set up for this. 
and you can set up accounts as well if you want to set up more other accounts rather than just the admin account you can do as well you can check out some of my older nas videos on how to secure your nas i know it's for synology but it will be pretty much the same thing for all nases this shows us our uh, little overview here of the populated drive bays you can see there's two on there we do we do not have any m.2 drives populated so you can learn about the ugreen remote access right here by clicking on the go button and it will help you set that up if you want to set that up next you've got your control panel right here this is for your connection and access for your user management your file service and also all the other stuff here you've got your general and your services here as well you can check for updates here it is really simple and easy to understand it's pretty much like a windows operating system the navigation around it is not that difficult so let's uh have a quick look here at the storage area, which I just showed you. And we can take a look at the app center right here. I'm going to agree to these. And this is where you can install all of your apps. And again, you've got Docker on here. You've got your photos, music, theater, sync and backup, clone drives, all of the useful stuff that you would need like Jellyfin. And again, it is pretty a decent operating system on this uh, little NAS right here. So if you want to back up all your photos from your phone, to your own personal NAS rather than using, say, Google uh, Cloud or any of the cloud storages out there that's costing you money. It will go onto your local account. No one's going to be viewing this content apart from you. So it's a bit more security uh, conscious there for yourselves. Again, theater, you can set up your own Plex and your own uh, theater viewing for all your movies and stuff and TV shows if you want to set that up. You can also set up here virtual machines you name it, you can do quite a lot with a NAS. And if you haven't had a NAS before and you have been considering it, then I would definitely look at the Ugreen options available because they are pretty decent and very affordable compared to some of the other leading brands out there, which do cost a lot more money. I'll quickly show you their web page here, 599.99, that's 599 pounds, 600 pounds basically, uh, to buy this particular unit. It's very affordable. And if you're looking to get a NAS, then look no further because this is a pretty decent deal. You can use PayPal to pay or any other payment method. They're all listed down there on the website. It tells you all about it. If you want to read more about this, then obviously check their website. The link's in the video description. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. If you've got any other questions, you can always join our Discord server. The link is in the video description also. And you can come over there and ask some questions about this particular NAS if you want to and what you can do and what you can't do. And I'll be happy to try and help you as much as I can. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. I shall see you in the next video. Bye for now.